In this video, we're going to be discussing acute pancreatitis. Also, stick around until the end, I'll be including a bonus question to test your knowledge. So let's begin. Hi guys, it's Nurse Celine from Go Nursing RN. As mentioned, we're going to be discussing acute pancreatitis. I'll be going over the background, the clinical manifestations, the diagnostics, the treatment, and nursing interventions. So let's start off with the background. What is acute pancreatitis? Well, just by looking at the word, we can think about itis, right? Which means inflammation. So acute pancreatitis is inflammation of the pancreas. The reason why this happens is due to an autodigestion effect. There are something called pancreatic digestive enzymes, and these enzymes usually get activated in the intestines. However, with someone who has acute pancreatitis, they become activated in the pancreas and then spill out to the pancreatic tissue, causing that autodigestion effect, leading to severe pain and patients being very uncomfortable, and it can be very detrimental and cause a severe infection. Also, acute pancreatitis can be from mild edema to necrotizing hemorrhagic pancreatitis, which can increase the risk of bleeding for these patients around the pancreatic area. Some common risk factors to develop acute pancreatitis includes having some kind of history of a biliary tract disorder, such as gallstones. Also, alcohol use is one of the leading factors that can lead to acute pancreatitis. ERCP, which is a procedure done a lot of times to visualize the common bile ducts, can also lead to acute pancreatitis as a post-op complication. Trauma is another one, along with hyperlipidemia. When it comes down to clinical manifestations of acute pancreatitis, one of the predominant clinical findings is going to be pain. Severe, sharp, pain that these patients are going to feel mainly in that left upper quadrant in the abdomen that radiates to the mid epigastrum and even to the back. These patients are not going to have any relief from changing positions and will be aggravated with pain really easily along with nausea and even vomiting. However, even when they vomit, they'll still have excruciating pain. These patients are going to be very uncomfortable and un at unease when they usually come to the ER. Other findings that you'll see clinically would include a low-grade fever followed by leukocytosis, hypotension and tachycardia, jaundice, decreased bowel sounds, which means that they might have formed some kind of ileus, and most important, we want to look for something called ecchymosis, which is going to be bruising. Now, when the pancreas is inflamed, it can cause seepage of exudate. And what that causes is patients to start bleeding around the pancreatic tissue. This can show in two different signs. We have something called Gray Turner sign, which means that you will see bruising on the flanks of the patients on the sides. And a way to remember this is you got to turn your patients. So think Gray Turners on the sides of the patients. When you turn them, you would see that discoloration of a bluish purplish color. We also have something called colon sign. And this one's going to be in the peri umbilical area of the patient. One key electrolyte to follow up on in regards of clinical manifestation would be calcium. Patients that have acute pancreatitis a lot of time will have hypocalcemia. And the reason for that is due to the fat necrosis, which will decrease the calcium levels. Now, there are two different signs that we want to watch out for for someone who possibly has low calcium. One is called the Shavoki sign. And the second one is called the Tarsu sign. The Shavoki sign, the test that we do for that would be we will take something sharp and kind of rub it around their face or their cheek area. And if their calcium is low and we do this, it will be positive if they start having some kind of twitching in the face.
The Tarsut sign is going to be where we take a blood pressure cuff, we will wrap it around the arm, we will go ahead and start the blood pressure cuff, just like taking a, a blood pressure, and you will see that the patient will start to kind of curve in their fingers and have some tremors or kind of curv uh, curving kind of motion in their fingers. Again, this means that the calcium is low. We need to ensure that that is being addressed and the provider is aware of that. When it comes down to laboratory tests, there are going to be two essential laboratory findings that we are going to see really usually increase in these patients that have acute pancreatitis. One is going to be amylase and the other one's going to be lipase. Now, the difference between the two is they can increase in different times. So amylase usually will increase within 24 hours and stay elevated for about two to three days. Lipase, on the other hand, will be elevated slowly. However, it will stay elevated for up to two weeks. Another couple laboratory findings to keep in mind is your ALT and AST, which will cover your liver. And these patients, a lot of times, if they have any inflammation within the pancreas, we want to think back, where is the pancreas, right? We know that the pancreas sits really close to the gallbladder and to the liver. So it can cause inflammation and cause distress on the liver. So we want to look at the ALT and AST. Other labs are going to be the white blood cells, platelets, right? So white blood cells will be elevated. Platelets are going to be decreased, leading to the patient to be high risk for bleeding. So following those laboratory tests, we need to do some kind of diagnostic tests as well. So we a lot of times start off by doing an abdominal ultrasound or x-ray. That will give us an idea if there's some kind of inflammatory process going on. But in order to get a better look, we want to do a CT abdomen with contrast. However, contrast can be contraindicated with various kinds of patients, so we also want, want to evaluate if they're safe to get contrast. When it comes to treatment, the number one thing to think about is going to be rest the pancreas. So we want to keep these patients MPO, so that means nothing by mouth, especially until the inflammation starts to decrease. Now these patients are going to need some kind of form of nutrition, right? Nutrition is key, so we want to maybe start these patients on TPN or PPN, depending on what the physician would like. Another important treatment is going to be putting in an NG tube, a nasogastric tube, and this is going to help decompress the stomach, especially if they're having episodes of vomiting or ileus, right? So we need to decompress that abdomen and allow the patient to be more comfortable. Medications for treatment include opioids and analgesics to help decrease that pain. If you recall, we said that pain is one of the predominant clinical findings, so we want to assess their pain, address their pain, and reassess after we gave the medication to make sure that we are keeping them as comfortable as possible. Also, antibiotics. If the inflammation or patient has necrotizing pancreatitis, we need to start them on antibiotics. Histamine receptor antiagonists and proton pump inhibitors. A lot of times will help with aiding with decreasing the gastric acid. And pancreatic enzymes that will aid in digestion of fats and proteins while the pancreas is not working as, at its best. We need something to supplement those enzymes. Therapeutic procedures include something called ERCP. Now, if the acute pancreatitis is due to gallstones, they can do an ERCP, which will help visualize the common bile ducts and allow them to actually access the gallstones and remove them or possibly place a stent. Also, if it is due to gallstones, they can even remove the gallbladder by doing a cholecystectomy. A couple other treatments could be putting a possible percutaneous drainage that will help take out any of the fluid that's causing the inflammation or even infectious fluid due to the buildup around the pancreas. When it comes to nursing interventions for acute pancreatitis, our key intervention is going to be managing the pain. Second is going to be ensuring that the patient's hydrated, watching their intake and output, monitoring their blood pressure and their electrolytes. Now, if you're paying attention, which electrolyte are we really going to be watching very closely? That's right, 
calcium. So we want to monitor all electrolytes and we want to ensure that we are giving fluids as prescribed or electrolytes as prescribed to replace them when needed. So daily labs are going to be important. A lot of times these patients are going to have a CBC, a BMP and replace them as needed. We also want to ensure that the patient is comfortable by of course managing their pain but also by positioning. We want to try to position them at their most comfortable position as possible. Now that might be a challenge but we want to ensure that we do the best we can as nurses. We also want to keep an eye on the blood sugar. A lot of patients, if they're possibly diabetic and then they do have acute pancreatitis, their blood sugar is actually going to go up, right? And so a lot of times this could be due to more of a deficit from the insulin. So we want to cover them with insulin as needed and maybe change their coverage or their dosage during the time that they have this inflammation process in their pancreas. A critical component to patient care is going to be education. So initially, patients are going to be MPO. Once they start to get better, we want them to start eating small, frequent meals. We don't want them eating large meals all at once. We also want them to adhere to a specific diet, and that includes high in carbohydrates, high in protein from lean meats, low in animal fats and simple sugars, and to avoid high fat meals. Antiemetics are also possibly going to be needed, especially when they just started eating for their first couple days. They might start becoming very nauseous and having a feeling of needing to vomit. We want to make sure that also their family is educated of how we can adhere to the plan and ensure that they're going to continue to work on themselves of whether it's lifestyle, quitting smoking, quitting alcohol intake, changing their diets, and you know, being at bedside, a lot of times you're working on educating the family and the patient, right? So when I'm at bedside, I make it a priority. No matter what kind of patient it might be, we want to ensure that the patient is always educated and that we always attempt to reach out to family or if family's at bedside to educate them as well to help the patient gain that support and, and make sure that there's someone following up on them. So those are going to be some key components of education and nursing interventions. It's time for the bonus question. Let's test your knowledge. A 67-year-old male patient with history of alcohol use started to have sharp, sudden pain in the left upper quadrant of his abdomen that radiates to the back. He was diagnosed with acute pancreatitis. What would be a priority nursing intervention? A is the correct answer. Insert an NG tube and keep the patient MPO to allow the pancreas to fully rest. Hey guys, thanks for making it this far in my video. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe here below. Also, question for you. Is there any other GI topics or any kind of nursing topics you're struggling with in nursing school? Please make sure you leave them in the comments here and I will definitely make a video about them to help support you through nursing school. Thank you for joining. See you next time.